and then yeah, just do the splashes, you know, the yeah. ee, ee. So maybe two guitars. Well, we do the whistles on the harmony track. Yeah. Have it instrumental for a couple of hours. And I like then... that because you did. We did that sort of instinctively yeah. a minute ago, uh -huh. and I like that. And then so you came in with have that. A, have a break. So if you want me to just scan. Yeah. Have a dab. I'll call you. I'll call you. I'll just. Uh... <laughs> Alright, to me. Yeah. Just, just sit. Yep. Do you want to go up? Do you want to go up anymore? I'm thinking. I'm not going to go up anymore. I'm not worried about the guitar because I'm assuming no. the guitar is going to be absolutely yeah. nowhere near the thing. And nothing. Nothing happens at all The needle returns to the start of the song And we all sing along like before And we'll all be lonely tonight And lonely tomorrow So the, the whole concept is to try and kind of let, let, you, let you sort of get, have access to music that has been fundamentally composed or arranged or, or performed by some, someone Scottish. That, that was a, as a tie, and also to kind of let you let you get a connection to, to music genres that you maybe not not might be aware of. To kind of broaden your scope as well in terms of what music you've you've listened to and, and what music you might listen to. And Shirley uh, is in a band from called Garbage. Have you heard of Garbage? Yeah. yeah. So, but I'm glad you've heard of Garbage. That kind of makes you feel better, doesn't it? That makes me feel much better. Uh, uh. <laughs> the song it has a life and an identity of its own. What I'd like us to try and do is just to try and find somewhere or somehow we can give it a new, or a different place of dwelling, a new place to live for, for a while. What do you think about us, like, uh, the, the song that you wrote? I'm intrigued. I'm, I'm really intrigued by what what you will do with it. And I want you really to be absolutely free to do whatever you want. So don't, don't be reverential. I think go the other way. Whatever you did to that song, and the further away it is from what you heard, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Not that I don't. I think that's a good version. But it'd be kind of lame if you guys tried to copy it. They'd be rubbish. I mean, part of the reason why we chose this is because it's, not, it's got such a kind of rigid pop structure that it'll be, it should make it more fun to tear apart. You know? So basically, you're, you're making a completely new piece of music, and all you're doing is using the vocal, basically, just what, I'm, what I was singing there as, as your starting point. You might end up not using very much of it. It's really, it's totally up to you. What kind of process are we going to be involved in, like in the studio? Like, are we going to do the whole thing, or are we just going to, like... Cut it off and mix it down, then you'll finalise it. What happens is we'll have like sort of group, just two, two people with a laptop each. You have a little laptop, a little keyboard to input information into it, um, and a little sort of audio MIDI interface you can record acoustic instruments as well. We can put a book about this program called Logic here, right? And you can see the sound wave. Okay. This, this works as a kind of virtual kind of mixing desk. I mean, if you've ever seen any, any, any in a studio for some mixing desks in school, this is like a, a digital version kind of thing. So each each track you can solo like in any any kind of recording studio. And there's the actual detail of it. And what will happen is each set of two will just work together and do just create whatever ideas they want, just you know, have their interpretation of it. So there'll be four obviously there's gonna be four versions of the song then. Because it's eight, eight in a group. Uh, once we've finished these workshops, I'll take those ideas and just try to make sense of what I th what I think is the best, what would be the best interpretation overall. Because I wanted to take to take on board everyone's ideas and kind of take the best from all that. And you can augment it with with, with, with our, our other instruments. So that that's kind of thing we'll, we'll, we'll be doing. And then just create a definitive version of of everyone's kind of input. Once we've done that, some another group will uh, look at, listen to take that song and whatever influences them from the version that we do, they're going to do an animated video. In terms of video, is there anything in particular you want us to get across like a theme idea? The track needs to kind of inspire the, the video and uh, me or that, as whoever's do, you know, we have nothing to do with yeah. the direction of that at all. That's up to the group and the video artists who come in and run those workshops. You know, just have fun doing the video, I must say that you get a lot of pop bands that are very serious, very poor-faced about pop videos and stuff, and you watch it and you can tell, and you're just like, this guy's giving it this. You know, see videos that where you just 
kind of have a laugh and stuff like that sometimes. You know, it's good. It sometimes works better. You've got complete access to technology that basically allows you to do anything musically with any sound source. I've got an intuitive way to, to, to blend sound and just try stuff. If it doesn't work, you just throw it away. If it does work, great. You can, and then through, through, through this process, I also will hopefully help you understand arranging music and the placement of instrumentation with, with a voice. So it's a really good opportunity to, to kind of experiment and just, just try stuff. And Wait, I heard that. And don't be too bothered with the fact that you, you're not that nimble in terms of rhythm or <coughs> ability. Just, just, it's just, I just want you to use your ears and your creative mind. You don't need to feel that, that like you have to sort of maintain the kind of integrity of, of the song. You can completely, you completely sort of destroy it, and in, and in doing so, you might find something. We might find something much better. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be different. Be irreverent, you know. Just think it's something that you know nobody's ever heard of before, and you've got to save it. Because when you hear my vocal on it, that I did today, boy, does it need saving. The other thing to remember is I haven't really sang it for, um, uh, for quite a long time. I mean, think if those words were written by a... 16, 17 year old. Uh -huh. you know, it was, uh, That's dramatic stuff. They're okay, yeah, I'll still stand up. Ahoy, ahoy, land, sea, and sky. Ahoy, ahoy, boy, man, and soldier. Ahoy, ahoy, deceive them, the punctured. Ahoy, ahoy, long. Well, I think that, you know, seeing the, seeing the way that the project was going to go and it just, it's, it's just such a good thing to, to have kids involved in, in, this, in this type of thing. And looking at, like, growing up in Lanarkshire and, and Masco would never be involved in anything like this. And I don't think, you know, I think that when you see a project like this, you've got to just make it, make it happen. I'll well, put you in the second verse, so it's just starting at the same chords. OK. The second half of the verse there is the best you've sung it so far. No, okay. Yeah. Shall we do one more? <clears throat> I know you were thinking, you know, like about a lot of these different people, and initially I thought, well, it's going to be hard to get everyone to accept it, you know, to say yes to it. But I think when you get the ball rolling, and then artists then see, oh, like, well, they're doing it, and maybe I should do it. And then once people join in, it has a snowball effect word get round and then you could say, well, look, these people have done it. You're running off the section and then... Yeah. Because we, we might, you know, we might just fade it in that or something. Sure. Yeah. Just another guitar part, because we Oh, yeah, totally. We basically record everything quite pared down, um, acoustic and vocal, but not together. So that the kids could take it away and just separate it out. If you had an acoustic guitar track going over the vocal track, then you, you would never be able to get rid of it, so... Um, although it's a kind of raw interpretation of it, there are certain guidelines like that. Acoustic guitars separate, vocals separate, and it's to a click. Well, that's cool then. I think that'll be fine. I don't think I went off the timing too much. It was fascinating just to, to watch an artist do the track in that, in that way, just so, so pared down. Um, so what we would then do is then, you know, put them all back to zero, make everything start at the same time and, and give it to to Brian uh, to take away to the school just in a kind of simple acoustic and vocal and click and anything else that's needed so so that the kids are then ready to do whatever they wanted. A lot of kind of um, young people that do music um, today at school it's, it's a bit of a different experience from maybe what a lot of people when you were at school. Hymns, what, what was, we, your, yeah, what was your experience? Yeah we did like school? hymns you know not being religious that was kind of difficult for me. Right. Um, I, I mean, that was it really. We didn't have any equipment, mm. you know. There was a piano, um, and and that was it. Nothing else. Yeah, I wanted to play bass guitar when I was like fourteen or fifteen, and I went to my music teacher, and he refused to give me a license. I think because I hadn't shown any interest before that. The music room was an old classical yeah, I mean, I mean, musician. He's a bit of a boffin, 
and we had no instruments whatsoever, but only pictures of instruments, like a picture of a saxophone and a picture of a trombone, but dissected, you know, cut in two. I think he probably thought it was fleeting or something, or this time I had the long hair and heavy metal t-shirts and stuff. And The music classes did seem to be about recorders and out of tune pianos, and I kind of always re resented them for a few years, but then it made me, it made me try hard and be more determined to go and like learn myself, teach myself. So. Yeah. So I mean, it's obviously a lot better now. You know, like a lot, I mean, a lot of schools have studios and uh, you know, and uh, instruments. You know, I mean, there were, there were no guitars, not even you know, uh, really crappy, badly tuned ones. There was just nothing at all. Electronic kits, drum kits here as well. It's quite, it's quite good, isn't it? Yeah. Stabbers in school. So when I went back uh, last year to school to see, it was fantastic. Keyboards, you know, computers, MIDI gear. Uh, loads of guitars, a drum kit, bass. I mean, I loved that if I was at school, you know. I really loved that. It's brilliant. We, we, we never had any. We had a record player in our class, that was it. He's a teacher that threw things at you. <laughs> oh, he still does that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're working on a synthesizer program just now, Logic Pro, um, trying to put different parts of songs together. Well, last week we had uh, Justin from the Army Train, and he kind of gave us a performance of one of his songs. But we're going to use this program to like, rearrange that. I wasn't here when he was playing it live for us, but I've heard it before, and it's a good song. Looking forward to working with it. Yeah, it's been challenging. You've got to get used to lots of different, like adding different effects into the, uh, changing the vocals and stuff as well. Did you find it quite intimidating? I did. What? But then I learned. So it was okay. Just what rough ducks back in it. Yeah. Did you think at any point you wanted to arrange it completely differently, like like put the verse, put the chorus here, to swap it around? And then you'd always like find something that you liked the sound of, and then you didn't really want to change it around after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to a recording studio um, next Monday, so we'll get the school choir to sing the chorus, which should sound really good, I think. Is that sing. going to fit in with that, that bit in the middle that you were talking about earlier on? Then? Yeah, I think yeah. it should. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're trying to get, kind of build up to this kind of big finish. Yeah. Advertise products that nobody needs. It's, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be hardly any vocal and like little samples of the vocal coming in. You know, I thought it would be really chopped up, but I suppose when you've got that, you know, six eight rhythm, you can't really do anything particularly edgy. It's always going to be sound of a lie. There's no room for urban. No, there's <laughs> absolutely no room for urban. I'm, I'm actually really impressed with that. And it does sound like they've, it's got a kind of, uh, healthy naivety to it that sounds like them and not you. Do you know what I mean? And it's got, you know, it's got dynamics in it, which the original doesn't have at all. There's no dynamics in the original. It's just all the way through. It's got that nice dip in the middle, and then the last verse comes up a bit. I, I really like the video, and I, I like it was quite subtle, and it managed to be literal without being too obviously literal. There's nothing worse than a literal video where you say, you know, I'm walking down the street. There's a shot of you walking down the street. I mean, even though it's got tricksy, you know, time-lapse stuff and dissolves in, and it's quite accessible. And it's watchable, you know, it's quite pretty. It's not, like, kind of jarring, and I really enjoyed it. 
Don't, don't. It gave me immense pleasure. <laughs> That's done. Again, not remotely what I was expecting, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised. When I was your age, I remember going to Tina Park and watching Shirley like on the stage at Tina Park singing this song. Do you think it sounds quite out of date, or do you think you know you just need to modernise it, or you know what? What do you think about it? I don't think the lyrics are out of date. Then just like the music can be a wee bit heavier. And that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Trying to make it more funky. Funky. More, more like us. We've got some ideas. We're just uh, putting down a new drum track now, and then we're going to put in new guitar riffs. Yeah. Make it sound a bit more rocky. Eh? Yeah. First time with you saying this stuff, but it's quite fun. Yeah. Wait, lyrics are the language's good. Yeah, it's, it's a good, good track. He's getting a lot out of it then. Yeah. I invested it all. You threw in a dime. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. With hands in glass. It's a shot like that. And then. In glass picture. Yeah, man, there's not going to be any sound, so don't worry about you talking all the time and saying, do, 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 you know, do this, do that, because it's going to be a track underneath it. There's not going to be any sound. Okay. So We've really just been doing storyboards and trying to get as many ideas as possible and then pick the best ones out of that. In our storyboard, we wanted somebody to cry, so we got a mask to rotoscope and put water on the side of the eye so we could film it and then draw over the teardrop to make an animation of it. What we're going to rotoscope us? I could just not draw around my hand. No. <laughs> so, nah. oh. Oh man, <laughs> well, It's when somebody's kind of throwing the ball away, and this is kind of us, the camera kind of following the ball. Mm. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. I gave up half of my heart. You gave a half heart to shrug. It's not good enough. It's not. Well, I didn't expect that. Like shorter than the original. Is it? Yeah, I know, and that's right. Uh, I think the intro kind of makes up for it. It's quite lots of different parts. Mm. It's good. You've done well. So yeah, how much did you get from from them, and then in the end, and how much did you have to go? Like, I'm just going to sort this. Out. There was guitar stuff. I mean, the the, bent, the, the guitar that you hear. I, I just took stuff because you just see kind of bluesy solo mm. all the way through it. Because they're working in groups like that, mm. they let each other hear and like, you know come away and sell each other or school, that's good or whatever. So it's quite good kind of getting their reacts to how, their, how other groups were kind of going about it, you know? A lot to take in. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot to take I in. I mean, I don't know how long that first listen was, but 15 minutes? 15, 16, 16, 16 10. 16, 10. Yeah. I did feel as well. It's in three parts. <laughs> it's a trilogy. <laughs> Okay. It's like listening to the soundtrack to all of the first three Star Wars movies. Well, the second three, obviously, the ones that were. <laughs> So have 
have you looked into any past records and stuff like that? Have oh, you? I've got two of their albums now. <laughs> have you? Have you? Well, that's really good. I've not, I've listened to them a couple of times, but uh, yeah, but you. It's, 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 it's not normally something I would listen to, but it's one of these tracks that it gets, in, it gets into your head and it just sticks it. Well, I've listened to it for three days solid now, so I can't say it's my favourite song, but it was good and I listened to it at first. The whistling was a bit, a bit of an odd thing to put in a song, because I don't know songs I listen to ever whistle in fact, songs. I've never heard a song that actually whistled before, but I, I know. it was quite cool. It was, really, it was really odd and different to put in it, so it was really fun to... There is no choice in what I must do. Nothing is greater than to be with you. Is anyone anyone here? listen to older music that maybe their mums and dads records or like their big brothers and sisters yeah really it's everyone what about you lot what about the girls what are you listening to anyone else <laughs> Jimi hendrix never really bettered on guitar but there's a real kind of i think that the mix that teenagers get in their you know, the family home is so, you know, it's so wide and varied now, it's like everything, you know. Yeah, it's, it's good, but there's also the fear that um, the kids will react against it because they, they heard their parents listen. I mean, I used to hate Roxy music because my mum hoovered the house every week listening to Roxy music and Brian Ferry. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was like 22 or something that I actually heard it and appreciated it for being a good mm -hmm. couple of albums. I actually started playing the guitar because I've, I've found out about the band New Order when I was at 16 in high school. And I was absolutely just stunned by them. Where, where do you hear new music? Was it all from the radio or where is it from? The radio is... Um, music channel. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Good gigs and stuff as well. Yeah. I just loved it so much I wanted to play it myself. And I think that's how most people end up getting into music because they, they want to emulate the thing that they, that they love to listen to. And there's, there's nothing quite like performing, even if it's something that someone else wrote. What about you girls at the back who are trying desperately to sort of sink into the scenery? Happy hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> that can be speeded up or slowed down equally as well. But we won't do any of that techno nonsense, that pink and perky stuff that all those kids get in. But that's you bad. Speed <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed in the kids that get off from that. I'm too bad. That's not what I'm saying. That's only comment on that. Tell me your confession. Let me be the ears for all your sins. Saw the lift open and then closing and then going up to the next floor and pressing the button and open the lift door and there'll be these two monkeys that are just sitting in the lift. But when you go upstairs, it just happens to be like a normal playing room because it's like, kind of like we have a filing cabinet, a chair, or some CCTVs. And I actually had an idea with the monkeys and that. What do you think about that? I'm drawing the animation scheme for the background. The robot police are going after the people, and then the bus goes in this building. The people have plates and they're not allowed to listen to music. That's where the busker Bye. is found to help all the people who are not allowed to sing or do music or anything. This is the road the robot will go by there. And that's all just the background stuff. Uh -huh. And then the beams, these beams come out like that and go out and get bigger. All you need to do is click it. Just click the laptop and then it takes a picture and then when we've done, once we've done it, it plays it back so it all goes out and joins together. That's going to be it. This is all going to be animated, right? But someone can kid on their robot, someone can kid on their being arrested. There's walkers, people walking by. Positions. Uh, we've got to walk and do a scene of the robot yeah. destroying the music. We're making a video sketchbook for the one of the middle scenes. That was good. I feel like Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> But ten years reflection and sudden affection comes on. Wow. That's amazing. That's great. 
Are they are they up for doing any more? <laughs> it's great, I love the That is really it's good. Like not the the kind of three, four, four, four thing. It yeah. Just, the vocal just, just kind of goes kind of free tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it works. Yeah, it's, it's a classic kind of remix approach that you strip everything away and leave the melody and then try and think of what the melody can be in a totally different context. And it's amazing how you can turn a melody into something completely different when I would never in a million years have heard that song like that. Yeah. So that's it's a really inspired approach, I think. It's amazing. The, the kids, they looked at your lyrics mm -hmm. and they decided oh. that it was all about control, mm -hmm. that they were the video was going to be about robots controlled by monkeys. I, think, I don't think you would get many sort of um, video producers or artists that would come up with as many quite psychedelic and weird ideas. Mm -hmm. It takes someone younger well, and like you're saying, kind of say. naive um, to just kind of come, yeah, we want monkeys, we want robots, we want tower blocks and we want like guitars and mm -hmm. like this whole concept and stuff like that. That would be seen in a lot of people's eyes as like the work of some mad genius. And I love the, the image of the dancing mm -hmm. on the, the squares on the dance floor in that really robotic kind of um, kind of almost catatonic kind of way. I thought that image was fantastic. It's like they're That's my favourite. No, actually, I forgot the guitar. I thought the guitar was good. Yeah. The, the, the on top of the, the on top of the tower? It's that big tower. Yeah. Yeah. Guitar. yeah. There's a lot of fantastic ideas in it. I mean, it's got it's packed full it again, of great mm -hmm. imagery. And it, honest, if I saw that video on MTV, I'd think it was one of the better ones I'd seen. It's a fiction. It was just somebody that I, I saw, um, very s sort of briefly. I guess the lyrics about you know not being with her but wanting to be with her, and, you know. And I think you can see somebody, and then you can build up a story in your head. Um, so that that's what I did, and I just imagined this girl. She was very tall. Yeah. I mean, it's just a sort of nursery rhyme in a way, a glorified yeah. nursery rhyme, and it was meant to be about that constant feeling of being like a Peter Pan, like. Really weird. And I, I thought she's so tall and kind of awkward. I can't imagine her ever. I wonder if, she, if she's ever had a boyfriend. Didn't she seem kind of shy? You know. <laughs> so there you go. Make of that what you will. I prefer to write more of a an oblique lyric, which can be interpreted perhaps in the way it was written, or interpreted in a way that is maybe makes it more personal to the listener. I think people want to know maybe about a songwriter's particular take on something and not just have the U2 bald statement of, you know, we're all, we're all one and yeah. love is everything, you know. It's like, well, maybe when you sell that many million of records, you have to just make it as bland as you can. Yeah, but possible. my level I'm at, I can say things that are most, like, mm. Bono's toes will be curling in his boots if he was ever going to say something mm. that personal. I wasn't trying to figure out um, what it actually means, but... <laughs> We're failing miserably. I don't even know what language it is. It's French. Is it French? Mm -hmm. It's hard. I'm sure. I like lyrics that kind of can mean something, but you kind of have to read into them before they mean something. Like they could look to be absolutely nonsense, but they do actually mean something to somebody. The project's gone really well. We've had different approaches to each song. We've had choirs, we've had accordions, we've had string players. So we came here today to Kem 19 Studios to um, hear a bunch of guys from Black Hall Academy who have taken Shirley's song uh, and just decided a live version of that. Good fun, good experience. I'm in here because like the drums are the hardest thing to record, kind of on their own. But uh, 
in the rain room, this can be like make the drum sound a little cleaner than I mean the guitar amps and stuff and all the distortional game right. I just done my vocals after several takes and many others. Had to do about 40 takes for Barry the drummer who cannot get the beat right at all. He is the most rhythmless drummer ever. Obviously I'm only kidding. It's been hard work. Everybody whoever's watching this is like, oh, if they've been in a recording studio and not done anything, but it's really hard work. I feel sorry for all these rock stars, I have to do it all the time. Chaos rules when we're apart. Watch my temper. The day's been really good, apart from the food. This is what they try to hit you with. A brown banana. The guys here, well, the guy Paul here, he's yeah. sitting this hell, man. He's really banging. Mm -hmm. It's been a good experience. It's been, it's been good working with him because he's just, he's just dead open. He's dead loaded with him. But he's not too kind of picky about it. He's, he's just a good engineer. Brian, Brian's just, Brian's cool, man. Brian's just Brian. He's just like, he just comes up with the craziest <laughs> ideas and they work. Like uh, using a three-string bass. And we had a problem with Sid's bass as well. Yeah. Something wrong with the volume on it. Yeah, there's a string missing on it and I found it a bit difficult to play with. Did it sound good there? You had the same tempo? Mm hmm. What do you think? Yeah, it did, uh huh. Would you, would, you, would, you, would you give it a go? This is a better, kind of more even, better yeah. bass. <laughs> And it's up straps if that means anything to you. Nothing. Good. Yeah, that's fine. Right. I'll <laughs> try and use it, but I'll probably forget to go to that. I'll, I'll forget. Why don't we tune it and give it a go? So uh, you're going. Your line is from. You're going from the, the G to the F to the G sharp, aren't you? You mentioned the other Mhm. It's a project run by South Lanarkshire Council to help interest young people in music and the whole behind the scenes of music as opposed to just the on stage bit and the fame and all the glory. You have to focus on not being famous. It's very important. If you hear, if you see, if you feel yourself going, I just want to be famous get stopped, just go and do something else, drive a bus. Really, what you have to do is totally love it without thinking about making money, without thinking about trying to have a career in it. Just do it and it all comes in. It, all the opportunities come in. You know, I remember my mum kind of saying when I was going to rehearsals and stuff when I was 16, just remember, it's, it's not, this isn't your real thing. It's like do it because you really love it and live on beans and toast for a week and a half or two weeks or a year. But keep doing it if you really love it and the opportunities will come in, definitely. Any time, you know, you'd mention that, or, oh, no, no, you are, you know, you, you're not going to get a job in that, and it's, you know, uh, you, have to be, you have to be super talented to get anywhere, and it's mm -hmm. a dead loss, and, you know, and kind of the same with music. If you weren't into classical music and going through the grades, mm -hmm. you were kind of dissuaded from that, and I don't know, I feel kind of cheated in a way. Like the curriculum back then was geared towards making a population that would go out and do a day's work in a factory or a, mm. you know, or an apprenticeship or something. So it was very practical. The, the schools these days, you, you know, culture's much more of an earner for like the kids and people growing up. You can get a job in the music industry or any of the arts industries, and I think the schools have, have realised that, and their their music department, art departments are a lot more funded. Because if you're creative, that's what you should be doing. You should be making a tune.